Have you ever seen the other side of the moon? Ah, I caught you. Of course not. But maybe you've seen it in photos. In that case, have you ever wondered why the two sides look so different? Well, let me tell you. We can't see the other side of the moon. People believe this is because the moon doesn't rotate around its axis. But this is not true. The moon does rotate. It just does it at the same rate as its orbital motion. This is a particular case of tidal locking called synchronous rotation. The first time we ever saw a far side was only in 1959, all thanks to the Soviet Luna missions and later the US Apollo program. Now, when Luna 3 and other spacecraft transmitted the first far side images, they revealed a far more cratered hemisphere that looked more like Mercury or Jupiter's moon Callisto. It looked completely different from what we were used to. And that's when we learn how meh the other side is. No, seriously, just look at it. The near side can boast its thinner and smoother crust. These beautiful dark splotches are called lunar mare, the last remnants of ancient lava flows. And when I say ancient, I mean it. They're more than 3 billion years old. Meanwhile, the far side crust is thicker and crater pocked. The lava flows had almost no effect on these impact craters. It's also devoid of any large-scale mare. Low-key looks like dried white cheese. To be honest, don't you agree that the nearby side is much more beautiful? Write your thoughts in the comments. So, only 50 years ago, we learned something about the apparent differences. But then the scientists discovered something weird. Both sides are different, even in the geochemical composition. And not only in this. Our side was thinner than the far side by several miles. But where did such significant differences come from on an ordinary floating stone ball? For scientists, this was a mystery. They started coming up with a lot of theories. The melted moon theory was the main one for a while. It said that it was the Earth's fault that our moon looks like this. This happened several billion years ago. The moon was born because of a collision. One day, an object about the size of Mars crashed into the Earth. At that moment, a piece broke off from it, which later became the Moon. However, this piece was somewhere 15 times closer to Earth than it is now. Some scientists created pictures of the so-called early Moon. Unlike our cute little white ball, the early Moon was a strange-looking boiling scarlet ball. That piece didn't leave us after the separation. It became tidally locked very soon after. The Earth after the collision was still an incandescent nightmare, full of fire and lava. It was boiling at a temperature of 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And since the Moon has always been turned toward us with one side, this side has melted down a little. This would explain why the Moon's surface, the so-called mantle, is thinner on the near side than on the far side. During the boiling of the Earth, certain elements evaporated from it. They then settled on the Moon. This would explain the difference in geochemical composition between the two sides. But there was a plot hole in this theory. If that's what happened, then where did rare foreign chemical elements come from, such as unusual isotopes of phosphorus, potassium, or tungsten? The nearby site is full of them, and they couldn't have come from the Earth. There were also other theories. Another one said that initially, we had two teeny tiny moons. Later, they merged into a big one, hence the difference in their composition. But this theory sounds a bit crazy, and it has a plot hole too. For example, the transition between the two sides is way too soft. If our moon was actually two tiny moons, this transition would be more abrupt. So scientists were kind of at a loss on this one. But recently, they finally figured out what really happened to the moon, all thanks to NASA's GRAIL orbiters. They spent over a year whizzing around the moon, mapping it out, and studying its composition. Using this data, scientists have created around 360 computer simulations. They contain different impacting objects of many sizes, traveling at different speeds. Scientists were comparing the results with our current moon. They tried to determine which result was the closest to what we have today. And so, they finally solved this 50-year-old mystery. The answer lies in a collision with a dwarf planet. This collision occurred 4.3 billion years ago. This huge object was slightly larger than Ceres.
For those who don't know, Ceres is one of the dwarf planets of our solar system. Its diameter is 580 miles. You could say that one France or one Germany would fit into it. So, this giant object crashed into the moon, somewhere near the South Pole. This collision was so strong that it changed the image of the moon forever. It left a trail of 3,500 miles behind. It would take you 14 hours by plane to fly that distance. This crater covered the entire near side of the moon. It caused damage to the moon's mantle. It also created a so-called South Pole Aiken Base, or SPA Basin. This is an impact crater and has a diameter of 1,600 miles, which is like adding one UK plus one Germany. It's important, though. The formation of this basin was a defining event in the history of the moon, and it's the second largest impact crater in the solar system. The collision also caused a powerful hot wave to spread across the moon. This wave scattered over the remnants of those rare, warm minerals scientists found on the nearby side. That's how our beautiful side became home to something called Procellarum creep terrain, or PKT for short. This is basically a compositional anomaly, a concentration of potassium, phosphorus, and other rare elements like thorium. You can say that those minerals are a gift to us from deep space. Anyway, there were many, and I mean many, collisions in the moon's history. All of them only deepened this already large crater. That's why the mantle on the near side was getting thinner and thinner with the years. Also, our gifted minerals gave off a lot of heat, so the mantle has melted a little bit more and more. Oops, this accidentally caused the moon's volcanoes to wake up. Volcanic activity has increased on the near side. Intense lava flows filled the old empty craters. Ta-da! And this is how the beautiful lunar mare was born. And uh, that's about how it all happened. All this information was found thanks to the researchers from Brown, Purdue, Stanford Universities, and NASA's JPL. The research was published by the Journal of Geophysical Research, Planets. So you can read about it in more detail if you're interested. There are still many things we need to learn about the Moon. The highest priority is the return mission from the South Pole, the Aitken Basin. Samples brought from there will be used to determine the age of the Moon, its history, and the nature of the crust and mantle more accurately. Another critical target is the Moskovians. This is the name of a large lava plain on the far side of the Moon. Studying it will help us better understand the difference between the two sides, as well as tell us how the other side was formed. All this knowledge is significant for understanding the history of the Moon, but it's also handy for space exploration in general. Scientists use the Moon as a reference point to determine the age of other planets and entire worlds in space. The Moon helps us determine the chronology of the life of the whole solar system. So, stay tuned for new exciting research and discoveries!